Hi, this is Ron Sipsick, and this is the first part of a three-part series on macroeconomic disequilibrium. Back in Unit 1 of the course, we learned about microeconomic disequilibrium. For instance, if you take a look at a micro market like the oil market, you see that there's a supply curve and there's a demand curve. And at the intersection of the supply curve and the demand curve, we learned that there's an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity. When we talked about market outcomes, we'll label this the oil market. When we talked about market outcomes, we made the argument that markets move from what? They move from disequilibrium towards what? Towards equilibrium. And we talked about those adjustment processes. For instance, if the price was too high, if the price was too high, that would create a what? That would create a surplus, and the price would end up dropping towards equilibrium, and quantity would come to the equilibrium quantity. If the price is too low, say the price is down here somewhere, well, that too would create a, a disequilibrium condition, a shortage, and the price would eventually rise towards equilibrium. So in a market setting, in this case in the oil market, if the price is not at equilibrium, it tends to move towards equilibrium, and the processes by which price moves is a very formalized and understandable process. And so the, the, the reason we study uh, equilibrium is not because markets are usually in equilibrium. Remember what I said, I said that markets are usually not in equilibrium, they're usually in disequilibrium. But the reason we study equilibrium is it will help us understand how markets move from disequilibrium towards equilibrium. Markets never really attain equilibrium because non-price factors are always changing and the market's always being disturbed by these changes in demand side and supply side non-price factors. But the point is markets move in a predictable way from disequilibrium towards equilibrium. So the equilibrium price the equilibrium price is really a place of stability. Remember that if you're in equilibrium, let me just make a note of that. It's a place of stability. If you're in equilibrium, unless something moves the supply curve or moves the demand curve, you'll you'll sit there. So equilibrium is a place of stability. Why? Because it's where the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. Now you can take the same ideas uh, from microeconomic uh, uh, equilibrium and disequilibrium and apply them to macroeconomic equilibrium and disequilibrium. Again, when you look at the entire nation, you're not talking about one product. You're talking about millions of products and millions and millions and millions of buyers, perhaps, of those products, and millions and millions and millions of sellers of those products. So it's much more, uh, much more complicated, and of course it's much more aggregated. But the same principles apply, that if, if the macro, uh, macro economy is in disequilibrium, it will tend to move towards equilibrium. So let's, let's take a look at what we mean by macroeconomic equilibrium and macroeconomic disequilibrium. Okay, so I'll move that, move that up. And if you recall, we, we have studied that the measure of output at the macro level is something called GDP. So GDP is actually our measure of aggregate or total supply. So when you want to measure the supply of output at the macro level, you're going to uh, measure GDP. That's what GDP is. And again, that's measured two ways. You can go an expenditure approach where you add up all the expenditures in the economy, subtract out any expenditures on imported products, and you'll get GDP. Or you can go the, the income approach. You can add up all the incomes paid add back depreciation allowances and you get GDP as well. So GDP can be attacked two ways, but nevertheless what it is is it's a measure of output. Now, what is the demand side at the macro level? Well, there are actually four demand sectors. There's the, there's the household sector, consumption. There's the business sector, investment. Now we're going to be very careful here. We're going to call this planned investment instead of actual investment. This is going to become a very important distinction later on. Planned investment is what businesses basically intended, intended 
it's actually an end, intended to invest. What we're going to learn is what businesses intend to invest and actually invest can be two different things. Let me, uh, let me use my eraser function here, clean this up a little bit. Okay, so intended. There we go. Okay, so this is uh, planned investment is what businesses intended to invest. Now, investment, as we learned earlier in the course, is going to be investment in capital goods or investment in inventory. So that investment uh, in capital goods or that investment in inventory that is intended is called planned investment. And we'll see, as we studied in Unit 1, we'll see that planned investment and actual investment are really two different, two different numbers. So if you take household spending, all of it's assumed to be intended. You take planned business spending, IP. You take government spending, all of that is assumed to be intended. You add to it export spending and you subtract import spending. You actually get the total, you get what is called total planned expenditures. Now, we will abbreviate total planned expenditures as TPE. TPE is going to be our measure of aggregate or total demand. Okay? Now let me move uh, let me move this material uh, up just a little bit. So, if if GDP equals TPE, the macro economy is considered to be in equilibrium. So you have macro equilibrium. In parts two and three of this series, we're actually going to do a problem where we actually calculate these numbers and then uh, look at whether the economy is in equilibrium or not and then see what happens as a result of it not being in equilibrium. Of course, if it's in equilibrium, nothing happens because remember, equilibrium is a place of stability. So it's only when the, the economy is in disequilibrium that you're going to have, have a movement. You're going to have some sort of change. So again, let's get it in our heads early that macro equilibrium is the condition where GDP equals TPE. Now, just as we learned in markets, this is very, very rare. This is rare. This is not likely to happen. But when it doesn't happen, uh, there are going to be forces set into motion that is going to move the system towards this condition. And we'll be able to look at what adjustments normally take place. And therefore, those will become adjustments that we can predict based on where the economy is at a certain point in time. Okay, so let me um, let me write out the two disequilibrium conditions for you and uh, then we'll wrap up this particular video. In the, Again, in video two we'll begin to do an actual problem and we'll illustrate these concepts. So there, it is possible that GDP could be greater than TPE. In other words, it could be possible that the rate of supply at the aggregate level is greater than the rate of demand. Now, in a micro sense, we would call this what? We would call this, this, this is a surplus. In other words, too much has been made. Okay? But at the macro level, we don't call it a surplus. We'll be calling it something else that I'll be talking about in part two of this series. So if GDP is greater than TPE, you have what? You have one of our two possible disequilibrium conditions. Okay, so this is disequilibrium. Of course, the other possibility would be where the rate of spending, TPE, is greater than the rate of GDP. Okay, so the rate of demand, the rate of demand at the macro level, aggregate level, could be greater than the rate of supply during that same period. Remember, we're talking flows here. We're talking uh, variables, dollar variables, dollar amounts over a certain period of time. So it could be that the rate of spending during a particular period is greater than the rate of output during that period. Now, that may seem counterintuitive. You may say to yourself, well, gee, how can people demand more than is produced? 
but you have to remember that uh, businesses carry inventory into every period. So, and the reason they carry inventory is for this very reason, that it's possible that the rate of demand could be greater than the rate of supply during this period. All right, so very quickly, let's, let's, just, let's just review the basic principles that we've learned. The two variables we're going to look at to determine whether the macro economy is in equilibrium or not is GDP and TPE. If they're equal, we're in equilibrium. If they're not equal, we're not in equilibrium. All right, well, this concludes the first part of a three-part series on macroeconomic disequilibrium.